Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Simple Cane with Complex Results. There are the colors I'm using today listed below, but you're going to want to pick all of your favorites. Just make sure that when they're side by side, that they look good blended. Now, I've picked four colors, but you could use three or even two to make your blend. Here's the black and white that's called Igloo and Poppy Seed. And I'll be using white in this cane for background. You can get this nice clay at uh, blueberrybeads.com and they also carry all the other brands too. So whatever kind of clay that you like. The way I prepare a sheet is to cut those uh, slices. I cut three or four from a block in that direction so they're not so small. Because I'm looking for some nice sheets. So I'm going to start out with uh, the shape that I want to come out of the pasta machine is what I try to put into the pasta machine. And that helps you with making sheets. Kind of think of it that way. Pick it up with your blade so they don't come back apart. We'll put this in the pasta machine. Now, I'm only going to do it uh, like two times. Because it's nice and soft and flexible and that's what conditioning is. It doesn't have to do with the strength of the clay or a lot of the things that you hear. Conditioning only has one purpose, and that is to make the clay soft enough that it doesn't crack when we bend it. I did all these sheets that were color on the thickest setting, and I did the black and the white on uh, number five. I prepared the black because I was thinking of popping some in, and I did on the next cane, but not this one. Uh, now I'm going to show you the kind of um, easy and sloppy way to make a nice blend because you don't have to cut all the pieces exactly before you start. You can do it like this. Just kind of eyeball it, stack them up. I want to use most of my pack of clay because I'm going to cut these blended um, pieces in half later on and use them. So I want there to be plenty to work with. You know, the second half made a completely different cane and I will bring you that soon. You'll see what I mean because you know, you wouldn't think a cane could look so different with just a couple of subtle changes. And, and we'll do that. So I'm starting to uh, form my triangular arrangement. Again, I'm stacking these up. Make a double thickness. Keeps me from having to make two blends because I want plenty. We should separate our colors so we can use them later. You know, I've got two uh, polymer clay groups on Facebook that I have so much fun with. And you are invited to join if you have not already. I put links down at the bottom for you, okay? One of them is called Hop Hooked on Polymer, H-O-P. Get it? <laughs> and the other one is um, Crafting Live with Pandora and Elena, which is a little uh, group that I run with my daughter. So there's the final blend, the way I arranged it. Now you really want to arrange yours the way that you want to. There may be a color you're really emphasizing that you want to really run through the design. So think about your blend. I think if I had to do over again, I would have put a little more contrast uh, where the purple and blue meet. Because you'll see in the end result that they kind of they kind of meld together a little bit too much. But I still really liked it, so... You know, you live and learn. So I'm going to fold it with the colors touching each other and put it in. Now, I usually run it through once in that, that state and um, start folding it afterwards just to kind of get the pieces really stuck together. So I'll show it that way, but this is kind of a funny part. Um, you know how when you forget to change the setting on your machine because you just used it on a 5 to make those black and white sheets? No, don't lie to me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I put my sheet in there and uh, squished it down into a five, which I thought was kind of funny. But if you ever do that, which it happens a lot, just fold it like this. Just fold it up with all the colors where they're supposed to go. It's okay. It doesn't make any difference in the end blend. It just makes it a little bit big and floppy to handle. But I, I think I've done that ten times in my life or maybe more. I flip my blend over a lot because I can really never get super even pressure on either side of the rollers on really any machine. Now there's kind of a partway blended version. 
I just wanted you to see how, you know, it's up to you where you stop. I've seen projects that would look fantastic with that odd, striated, you know, um, rough blend. So, you know, you might want it that way. But I'd like it a little bit more blended, so I'm going to go through to this point. And you could go even farther if you want to. So I'm going to fold this up and make it into a strip like we usually do. And usually when you make a strip like we're going to make, where you make this, this rectangular shape, okay, it's, um, you fold it into kind of a wide strip, and you put it into the pasta machine with one color down. So it's the end, the end of the strip that goes in there. And then you end up with one of those big ribbons like we all make. Well, in this case, um, uh, we're not going to jelly roll it all together or blend it really back together at all. We're going to actually take it apart. So I've taken it into three equal pieces because I want to show my blend a different way. And it's just really fun to, to use it in a different way. I'm going to roll each of these up. And by the way, I'm only using half of these today. So these rolls I'm making right now, I'm going to cut in half and make our cane with it. And I don't know if I mentioned that uh, before. So you'll see in later clips that there's the other three halves are laying there. But I'm not looking for a huge cane today. I just want to show you. So there they are. I reduced them a little bit and cut them in half. So there you see the two halves. One of those, um, you know, one set of halves is going to be for later. So don't be confused about where that goes because it kind of is confusing. Now that's my number five sheet of white. And that's going to form my background. And that's important. And that's why I have black and white because I really hadn't decided if I was going to put some black um, in between two sheets of white. Or there's a lot of ways you can make your background in your outlines look really different but I chucked I went with the white on this and I'm reducing those again to about three inches so when you have just a little bit more than three inches uh, trim them off and make them all the same as each other Boy, my voice is doing pretty well today. I, I really struggle with my vocal cords. And uh, today I had, I really was uh, struggling with the audio. And finally the frog started to go away. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> it's not always convenient to record all audio after three o'clock when my frog goes back under its rock. <laughs> the resident throat frog. So I'm just taking those three um, jelly rolls and just pinching them down into a teardrop shape. So reduce it, take it to three inches. Make sure you have three good inches because you trimmed it. And just lay those three um, little uh, jelly roll now um, teardrops next to each other with the points down like I'm showing you. So they're just butted up against each other tight. And we're just going to put a little fill in there. We know what that's for, because if we just squish into that, they'll just be flat things that we can't recognize anymore. So when you're trying to maintain the shape of, of any element in your cane, you need to fill up the space that's empty so that the clay has a place to go when we reduce it. So you've got three jelly rolls formed into teardrops, laid side by side with a little snake of white that we made triangular so we could just fall in those little spots. It's my little cane bender. That's the second size. I use it a lot. Really, I need uh, different size tools for my hands now that my hands are, you know, old. Uh, the tools are really helping me even more. These are square pairs. You'll see later how they're used in pairs. I was just um, looking at my edges to make sure that they were straight. But uh, you can use them for a lot of things. They're one of my most popular items that I have. So we take this, we put it together. And yeah, if you had one, if you're making a Valentine's Day thing or something like that, we could really emphasize the shape of the hearts that's formed by this. But this isn't really about hearts. It just kind of uh, it's coincidental in this game. 
It's more about um, the way they look when they're all together. They look, they don't look quite so heart-like. So you take that one, uh, when it was still tall like that, just lay it down and start making it into a tall triangle. It doesn't have to be any one specific shape. In other words, it doesn't have to be equilateral or anything like that. It started out to be a tall triangle and we're making it into a smaller tall triangle. You see, as we work it, it becomes more and more the shape we want anyway. So, I'm just looking at the lines on my surface. I'm wanting to keep it really straight right now because we're going to cut it and it's going to need to match up. There's nothing complicated about this part. It just takes a little bit of um, patience. And trim it. And see how it's going to look. Now, this little test right here with that slice is a key part of cane making. Because if I put this together right now and it didn't do anything for me, I've got all kinds of options to change this around and lay it out a different way. But if I do like it, I can go forward. I like that. That was pretty. So now that I know I like the way these look together, I'll use it, uh, put it together for the whole cane. And then we're going to get ready to reduce this a little bit. It's very easy. As I said, it's souffle. It's nice and soft. You see it does hold detail. It just feels, it feels soft, but it's not too soft. So I'm making sure that this triangle is pretty even. And I'm going to cut it again. So we're getting almost to where we're going. It's already a lot more complex pattern than it was to begin with. But I'll show you how to take it from this diamond shape to a square shape. And you're going to want to do this a lot because this is like a square kaleidoscope, which has so many functions. You know, hexagons, not always the easiest thing to work with. We don't always need circles and hexagons. But when we have squares, oh, you, you can imagine that um, sliced up for a bracelet, a back, you know, like a, a design sheet, a nice big sheet of that to make a bowl or a plate. So uh, square kaleidoscopes will probably be something that you will really enjoy making. I'm reducing that so that I can cut it into four. And you know, I might have made it bigger to begin with, or I might have taken it way down in, in scale. But I want you to be able to see the finished product well enough to know, you know how we got there. So I left it that size. And it goes together just like that. It's super easy. So I hope you'll try it. Uh, we're going to do it on Crafting Live. And, um, you know, while I answer any questions there, you can put slices around there and make a whole, a whole pattern that connects. And I hope you do. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.